The operating instructions, which must be permanently available, form the basis for all maintenance work. To guarantee component quality, and with it the safe function of the compressor, only use genuine components from Zauer and Zorn. Please be aware that the use of an alternative source for parts may cause compressor damage, personal injury and void warranty. All Zauer and Zorn original parts are supplied with a Zauer Certificate of Conformity. Only authorized people are permitted to operate and maintain Zauer compressors. All maintenance work must be carried out in accordance with the relevant safety and health regulations. In order to avoid the risk of personal injury, before maintenance ensure the compressor has been allowed to cool, internal pressure has been relieved and any life-threatening voltage isolated. Please note, the maintenance work needed for a three-stage air-cooled compressor is dependent upon the operating hours. Maintenance will begin at 50 hours after first putting the compressor into service or following an overhaul. By dividing the overall pressure ratio into three stages, lower compression temperatures are achieved when compared with two-stage water-cooled compressors. This design approach then helps to lengthen the period between maintenance intervals and importantly increases the compressor component life. All Zauer compressors have their own ventilation system. To avoid damage caused by condensation, the fresh air supplied must not be directed straight at the compressor. The drain lines of several compressors have to be laid separately. It is imperative to avoid starting other compressors arranged in parallel by joining drainage lines. Our compressors can even be reliably used in room temperatures of up to 55 degrees centigrade. Attention! Too much ventilation is more harmful than useful. All host lines have to be installed tension-free and without any twists to guarantee the compressor vibration will not lead to material damage. Only authorized persons are permitted to install and commission Zauer compressors and to operate them. Before switching on, firstly check the compressor condition for leaks, joint tightness, etc. and all tools and loose parts have been removed from the machine. During operation of the compressor, the suction intake, as can be seen by the marker, has to be directed upwards. To avoid damage, only oils or oil grades in accordance with the Lubricant Table Chapter 10 are permitted. Should other oil grades be considered, starting requires agreement with Zauer and Zorn. For air compression, mineral oils are used. Synthetic oils are not recommended, as their use may cause damage owing to their better separation properties. The low compression temperatures of three-stage air-cooled compressors again lower the risk of carbonization on valves, even when mineral oils are used. Zauer recommends the use of normal SAE30 oils, as they are also used in diesel engines and readily available. Only after visual inspection and an oil check is it permitted to switch the power supply on. First, the direction of rotation has to be checked in manual mode. Rotation can be determined simply but has to correspond with the rotation arrow on the crankcase. If the direction is wrong, there will be no oil pressure created with the risk of consequential damage. The compressor has to be stopped immediately. The monitoring gauges and switches supplied for the three-stage air-cooled sour compressor, for example oil pressure and temperature switch, have been checked and adjusted during the works factory test. 
When putting into service, only the cabling within the electrical control panel has to be checked. This can be done simply by disconnecting the electric connections on the devices themselves or at the terminal box. After the interruption of the contact, the respective alarm will display. When the compressor starts in manual start-stop mode, the correct adjustment is for the drain valves to close after approximately 15 seconds and the compressor to come onto load. Every 15 minutes for about 15 seconds, an automatic signal will open the drain valves to dewater the compressor. The proper function for this cycle can be seen as the air pressure falls on all stage pressure gauges. When the compressor is operating in automatic start-stop mode, remote pressure switches monitor the pressure in the system. If the pressure falls below the adjusted range, the compressor will start. However, when the maximum system pressure is reached, the pressure switch will switch off the compressor and await a restart. If the compressor stops for a long period of time, then the power supply should be switched off. The air inlet filter element cannot be cleaned. It has to be exchanged when necessary, at least annually, but at the latest after 1,000 operating hours. To replace the element, open the clamps. Remove the cap. Replace old air filter element and close the air filter again. In order to check the coupling, remove inspection plug. The flexible ring can then be checked for damage. The gear teeth of this ring must not be deformed. After inspection, the plug has to be refitted. The required torque can be viewed in the operating instructions at Chapter 8.4. Firstly, all threaded joints must be checked for security and for any leakage using a white, lint-free cloth and retightened as necessary. The cooler and air ducts. The cooler supports. Threaded joints for pipes and hose lines. Monitoring gauges and any sensors. Cylinder heads and the cylinders themselves as well as electric motor and intermediate flange, bearings, protective switches such as temperature or oil pressure, as well as accessories and equipment such as HP flexible hose with non-return valve and any connecting flange. To remove the piston pin, the piston must be handled carefully to prevent any possibility of damage. The snap rings or circlips are removed and the piston pin pressed out. Using appropriate tools, the renewal of the small end bearing is carried out. In order to install a new pin, firstly insert a snap ring to one side of the piston. Then from the opposite side, carefully press the pin into the new bearing and lock it with the second snap ring.
Service work for the running gear requires specialist expertise, which has to be carried out by Zauren Zorn trained engineers. To avoid damage, only use oil grades in accordance with the lubricant table chapter 10. Before considering the use of an alternative grade of oil, agreement must be sought from Zauer and Zorn. For air compression, mineral oils are used. Synthetic oils are not recommended, as their use may cause damage owing to their better separation properties, which creates water in the oil sump and may cause more rapid wear through lack of lubrication. The low compression temperatures of three-stage air-cooled compressors again lower the risk of carbonization on valves, even when mineral oils are used. Zauer recommends the use of normal SAE30 oils, as they are also used in diesel engines and readily available. Initial maintenance after 50 operating hours, following startup or an overhaul, includes an oil change without replacement of the oil filter. It's easier to perform the oil change when the compressor is still warm. Oil filler cap, dipstick, and oil drain plug are easily accessible. To drain oil and refill with oil, pull out the dipstick. The optimal oil level after filling is midway between the upper and the lower marks on the dipstick. Between maintenance intervals, the oil need only be refilled when the dipstick displays the minimum level. Note, oil consumption will increase if overfilled. All piston rings should be checked and maintained after 6,000 hours at the latest. To achieve this, Firstly, the cylinder heads and valves must be dismantled. The pipe connections and hose lines of the cylinder heads, as well as the cylinder head nuts, must be loosened to remove the cylinder head. Then take the plate valve out carefully and clean all gasket surfaces thoroughly again with care. To remove the cylinder, first the cylinder base nuts must be loosened. To reinstall, a small mark ensures the correct position for the cylinder. When removing the cylinder, the piston must be rotated to the bottom of the stroke, lower dead center, and has to be held in place securely, so that it does not strike against the crankcase or the threads of the studs. Take great care during maintenance never to damage the